Welcome, and thank you for joining us here at Commitment Online, a place for all nations. We want you to fully engage with us, so feel free to gather your family, invite a friend, or if you're alone, we trust that you'll have a wonderful worship experience with us today. Our worship service will begin in just a few minutes.
Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, Father. We lift you up in this place. Every song, Father, every lyric, Father, let it be pleasing unto you. Let our posture, Father, be of obedience unto you as we praise you, as we glorify your name, because you are worthy. Father, we leave every fear and insecurity, Father, every distraction at the foot of the cross today that you may take over. Father, let every lyric be your word that cleanses us, that makes us whole, makes us new. Have your way, Father. Let it be well with our souls. Father, we thank you for just getting us here this morning. Have your way now, Father.
with me
and we'll never be ashamed because he is our God. Oh, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from every fear. Those who look on him are radiant. They'll never be ashamed.
may be seated. So, uh, just uh, so if you're here for the first time, my name is Pastor Cedric, and been blessed to be the lead pastor here. And uh, in this sermon series called "Restored," uh, we are going to <clears throat> change how we do our order of service or our rundown that we call it. Uh, so we will start with worship as we did. Uh, you will have a more, uh, sh- you will have a shortened uh, sermon message from myself. And then what we'll do is pray the text in which I present to you today from Psalm 23. And then afterwards, we will worship again. We will again worship, all right, dismiss the kids, short teaching or a shorter teaching from Psalm 23. And then we will pray the text and then we will then worship again. So you may be asking why. As I shared with you last week, uh, personally, when the new year begins, I feel rushed into it. I feel rushed into it. And, and this year, more than ever, I felt rushed and waited because of how the year ended with all kinds of different complications you know, among the body. No, nothing serious, but... We had uh, several people who lost loved ones, and I was directly impacted, and, and that takes a, wa- a, a, it's, it's a weight on me as I serve others, and not to mention all the wonderful things. Shucks, we ended the year with six baptisms, spontaneous baptism at our New Year's Eve service, so there's all kinds of good stuff that are happening, and we had close to 300 people you know, come out and visit and experience commitment here physically, not to mention those online, and, and what God is not, not only doing here this campus, what God is doing in, in, in Columbia, uh, South America, what God is doing in uh, Mechanicville, New York, what God is doing in Wyoming, Pennsylvania. There's a lot of stuff that's going on that you probably don't even know about, <laughs> but I know all about it. So personally, I'm like, okay, God, I don't want to rush into this year. And as I was just asking God, what should we land upon it. It was like, no, no, you need to slow things down. Let You and my people need to be bathed in prayer, bathed in worship. You need to still teach the scriptures, but you need to pray and and ask the Lord to help you apply what we have been navigating through Psalm 23. So personally, and I don't know about you, I don't know if you've been feeling rushed and obligated to get stuff done fast and in a hurry. Well, again, our reminder is that we cannot be rushed, but we need to slow down, be restored by the good shepherd himself. Amen? Amen. So as a reminder, this sermon series is to help you and I be restored in our souls uh, so that we can have this strategic time of worship and reflection of God's word and also prayer. Amen? So let's pray and ask God to help us today. Father, I pray that you will help me help your people. Uh, God, uh, we need you more than ever. God, as I look into 2024 and all that is coming, uh, so much is good is coming that I know of, and I can't imagine what you know about concerning us. Uh, Lord, we need your help and your strength. We need your fortitude. We need your encouragement. We need to be directed by you, you need to order our steps and so that our paths may be straightened and bring honor and glory to your name to protect your reputation in all that we do. So Spirit of God, please come and help me. I pray help your people. And I pray, God, that you open their hearts to what you desire to do in their lives for generations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So from Psalm 23, we're going to uncover three important truths. First of all, that we're restored in whom the Lord is. We covered this last week. Simply put, he is our shepherd. Uh, Secondly, we're going to learn how to remain open to being shepherded by the good shepherd. And lastly, we are going to hold on to the promises of the shepherd because you find in Psalm 23, he gives us so many magnificent and precious promises that we need to hold on to as we enter this new year. So if you can, open your Bibles to Psalm 23. We're only going to be in verse 2 and 3, but we're going to build upon reading the entire 
uh, Psalm 23, and we'll begin with verse 1. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I will not be in need, or I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for the sake of his name. And again, as you read through this psalm, it's almost like we can just close the Bible and say, okay, God, that's good enough. Right? I mean, we read part of verse 1 last week, and it was like, the Lord's my shepherd. Hmm. Let me sit on that and let that marinate a little bit. Similarly, if you just read these three verses and just pause a bit, it's like, wow. This is refreshing and restoration, rest, restoring just to hear it with my ears and to apply it to my heart. But we can't just do that today. <laughs> so we must remain open to being shepherded. So if you look at in verse 2 and 3, there's about, uh, there's about uh, four or three key, maybe four key words. The first is this, to be restored is simply saying to God that I want you to refresh me. God, refresh my soul. Restore my soul. But then you look at the word lie down or two words lie down. It is to stretch oneself out. It also means to lie stretched out. So and hold on to that, that definition as we navigate today's series. Then the next word is leads. It means to guide with care, to give, cause, and bring to a place of rest, to refresh, to guide to a watering place, and to lead to a goal. Last words, namesake. Simply is this. It's one's reputation, one's fame, One's glory. Amen? So from these definitions, it is clear uh, that we are restored when we apply uh, about three things I'll give you today. The first is this. When we remain vulnerable, remember the word? He lets me or makes me lie down in green pastures. He, what, stretches me out. Vulnerability. So have you ever been to a place... Uh, or, or been to, um, let's say you've been out in the wilderness somewhere or you've been at the beach and you just kind of just stretch out under the sun. It's a place of vulnerability. Maybe you have a dog and your dog likes to be pet. What, what happens when you start rubbing them in that, that special place? They just kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> They're simply saying, I'm, I've become Vulnerable. You touched me in a spot that caused me to be vulnerable. The same is with God, is that when he touches you as the good shepherd, when he restores your soul, it creates this vulnerability, or it should, that you stretch out and say, God, every part of me is exposed. I don't care what one thinks how I look, I don't care what someone feels. You see, it, it, it impacts every area of, of your life. Think about the psalmist David. Remember when his, his wife saw him dancing before the Lord? And he stripped down to his, his briefs, his underwears, and he says, you know what? His wife was saying, you know, you're the king. You, you're going to embarrass yourself in the kingdom. And he says, you know what? I can even act more indignified than this. It's like, wait a minute. How can you get a little more indignified than stripping down to your underwear? Well, there is this next step. It's complete vulnerability, which is naked I've come into this world. Naked I will return. Vulnerability is super important if you want to be cared for and restored by God. Does God touch every area of my life? Second, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 through 10 expresses our ultimate form of vulnerableness. You know what it is? It's to admit our weaknesses and our complete reliance on the good shepherd. Listen to what it says. <clears throat> Verses 9 through 10, it says, 
And he has said to me, this is Jesus speaking to the Apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. I want his power. I must first admit weakness. I need his strength to navigate life. I must first admit what? Weakness. Verse 10, therefore, I delight in weaknesses. So contrary to the world, so contrary to how we've been taught and raised, in insults, in distress, in persecutions, in difficulties in behalf of Christ, not just being persecuted and having difficulty and distress just because you're disobedient and doing whatever you want, but it's for Christ's sake, I'm good to go. It says, in behalf of Christ, for when I am weak or needy, then I am strong. Then 2 Corinthians 6, verse 11 through 13 expresses our need to trust the good shepherd to develop. Listen to this. This is the next part, part of vulnerability, vulnerability with others. You see, here's the challenge. I can say I love God, but I hate you. But then he says, well, how then can the love of God be in me? Similarly, how can I be say, I'll be vulnerable to you, God, but I'm not going to be vulnerable to you. That's where relationships go south. That's where people don't get completely healed and restored and refreshed because we need each other. So this, there's this application of vulnerableness to the shepherd, but also must be vulnerable to the sheep that are part of the flock. And so many times we say, oh, no, 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 no. I'll be vulnerable to you, God. I'll admit my weaknesses towards you, but I won't admit that I need anybody else around me. And maybe you're not saying that, but your behavior communicates that when you're not around God's people. When you think only your family is it. When you think, no, 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 I got... My wife, I got my kids, and we're humming on all cylinders, but you're void of all the other sheep who need the shepherd just like you. And that's why when you look at Paul, he expresses this vulnerability. Listen, this is one of the sweetest passages of Scripture that I've ever run across when it comes to leadership, relationship with the people. Our mouth has spoken freely to you, haven't held anything back. Pure honesty. You Corinthians, our heart is open wide. One can't lead. One can't have relationships until you open your heart up. How fair is it to say, oh, well, you're not being real with me, but you're not being real with them. How fair is it to ask someone to be vulnerable to you but you won't be vulnerable to him. So Paul understood this. So he says, listen, we have opened our hearts wide. Listen to verse 12. You're not restrained by us. No one's, no one's hindering you. He says, but you are restrained in your own affections. You're holding back. You're the one holding back. Now in the same way, in exchange, I'm speaking as to children, open wide your hearts to us, you as well. Vulnerableness to God creates vulnerableness to other people. If you're not vulnerable to other people, you're really not vulnerable to God. And if you're not vulnerable, you're not allowing him to completely shepherd your soul. We must remain vulnerable. Secondly, when we allow his leadership to guide us with care towards refreshment and rest, listen to what it says again, leads me beside quiet waters. Guide with care. Relinquishing control and becoming vulnerable to a place that you allow 
the good shepherd, to lead you wherever he wants is not leading you to a place that is not quiet, that is not full of care. Isaiah 58, verse 11, expresses how the good shepherd guides us towards satisfaction and strength. Satisfaction and strength. Think about this. How many times do we say things like this entering the new year? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, more in control of my life. You know, I'm going to be stronger with what I eat and my diet and exercise. Chances are, if you try to do that without being vulnerable to God, you will fall on your face every single time. And that's why people break New Year's resolutions over and over again, because I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be satisfied if I accomplish everything on my vision board. I'm going to be satisfied, right, if I lose 20 pounds. I'll become more attractive if I, I feel more satisfied if I, but listen to what Isaiah 58 verse 11 says. The Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire. His, this is so, look, listen to the vividness of this in scorched places. So if you're in a scorched place, the only way you're going to be satisfied and be guided through it is that you must trust the care of the good shepherd. But it gets better. It says, and give strength to your bones. And you will be like, you will be like a watered garden. Doesn't this sound familiar? Psalm 1. You'll be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters don't ever fail. Then Psalm 25, verse 4 and 5, describes how the shepherd's truth leads us. So we should wait on him. Don't run ahead. Wait for the shepherd to lead us. Make me to know your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. Listen to the words. For you are the God of my salvation. For you, I'll wait all day long. Isn't that sweet? It's like, okay, God, I don't know where to go, what to do, how to do it. I don't know who to trust. But you know what I will do? I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you, for you to guide me carefully towards refreshment, towards rest. We remain vulnerable, which allows the good shepherd to care for us and lead us into refreshment and rest. And then lastly for today, when we trust him in all things and with all our heart, why? So that we may protect his reputation. Remember what it says in verse 3 in Psalm 23, for his name's sake. Lord, I just don't want to be vulnerable so I can just feel better about myself and just know that I'm, quote, checking a box. Lord, I just don't want to be guided by you just because I want to be refreshed, right? I want to be rested. I want to be restored. But no, do all of this and much more for your name's sake, for your reputation, for your fame, for your glory. Here's a familiar verse that I'm sure many of you know, Psalm, excuse me, Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 8. We may just memorize verse 5 and 6, but 7 and 8 is also important. It describes how we should be all in, all the time. Then he will keep things straight for us. And then when he keeps things straight for us, it will always be 
for his glory and our good. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. I want to just leave you with a tool to understanding and applying a Bible. And this is something that I always do personally. If I read verse 8 and it says, it will be healing to my body and refreshment to your bones. I look at it from this context. It's okay, well, God, I know sovereignly you can instantaneously heal me. But I also know that you can choose not to in your sovereignty. But I also know, thirdly, that when I die, this corruptible will be exchanged for an incorruptible. So at the end of the day, healing will come either here or there. Makes sense. So so there's this this trusting in a good shepherd to say, okay, well, healing can come. But in the way for healing, am I being refreshed in my bones? When I'm waiting for it to happen, will I be refreshed? If it never happens, will I be refreshed? So refreshment can happen if he does or if he doesn't. Refreshment can happen if he adds a hundred zeros to my bank account or if it ends negative every month. And that's, that's the truth in the body of Christ. Right? Refreshment can happen if my marriage is vibrant and exciting and is running all cylinders or even if it's hit a speed bump. Because marriages do. Refreshment can happen when I'm alone and when I'm not. Refreshment can happen when all the families around the dinner table during the holidays or if it's you by yourself or just you and your husband or wife. So, exegeting the scriptures and applying it, I then ask myself the question, why aren't I being refreshed? Is it because the only way I know you're there is when I'm only going through the good? Well, his promises is not hinged upon how life goes here on this earth. So, Cedric, what are you missing? What if it, what are you missing when you can be restored and refreshed? when you and Lisa are having this spat and she's in a room and you're, you're sitting on a couch, you know, just turning the TV channel and not even watching nothing. <laughs> Can you calm yourself down and slow your roll and get out of your own head and let his heart refresh you? To a point that you can walk in 
to the room and say, sweetheart, please forgive me. Just got a little frustrated. That's real life. That's being vulnerable. That's allowing him to care for you. That's trusting him and preserving your reputation because guess what? Your kids and grandkids are watching how you interact with each other. Your neighbors are listening to you depending on how close your proximity of your neighbor is. Today, can we pray that he shepherds us in these areas? Can you pray? Just bow your heads with me right now. And just pray that, pray for yourself that God help me remain vulnerable to you, my good shepherd. And what area in your life, maybe one, maybe two, maybe many, what area in your life do you need to remain vulnerable in? Just talk to him about it. Can you pray also for us as a church that they that we in this community of believers will always be a vulnerable people, that we will be quick to to admit our weaknesses and vulnerabilities, that we'll be quick to open our hearts to each other. Lord, I pray this for us. Help us to understand in our weakness and our vulnerability, we're strong because you, Jesus, show up in our weakness. Help us to be a a people that keep our hearts open to you, O Lord, and to each other. That our hearts are open wide, O commitment. Secondly, can you pray that you personally will allow his leadership to guide you with care towards that place of rest and refreshment. Trust him. He's not going to guide you to a place that will hurt or harm you. Oh God, we pray this for one another, that, Lord, that we will always trust your care. As we learned last week, as a psalmist said, that you you nestle us in your robe. You just tuck us in. And you care for us close, closely and carefully. Can you also ask the good shepherd to help you trust him in all things because at the end of the day, it's about his reputation. It's about his fame. God, we want to be where you are. We want to be in the right path all the time. We want to surrender all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength to you all the time because it's about trusting you and where you lead because wherever you lead, my God, you will preserve your reputation and your fame will be made known in all the earth. Let it be so in us. Let it be so in our church. Two more areas I want to pray for today. Can you now just pray Everything we just pray for your family, for your friends, and in this that they would be saved. Because this is found in salvation in Christ. Everything that I describe to you is found in salvation in Christ. Through Christ, we can be vulnerable. Through Christ, we are cared for. Through Christ, we are able and empowered through his Holy Spirit, 
to trust him and protect his reputation. And while you're at it, can you pray that, that, that God will send them with you? If you've been burdened by their presence sitting next to you or in front of you or behind you, can you pray for them individually by name? That God send them. And extend it to sending it, sending people from the north, south, east, and west of all nations and tribes and tongues. We believe that you can do this, oh God. Cause us to stand in awe of you as you rescue our friends and our families and you send people of all nations and tribes and tongues here. And if there's someone here today who does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, it's real simple. Become vulnerable. Admit that you're lost without him. Admitting that your loss just simply says, I know I have sinned against you, God. Admitting that your loss just simply says, I can't do life anymore on my own. And all you need to do is just simply say, Jesus, forgive me. Just come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior because I can't do it anymore. Strengthen me through the power of your Holy Spirit to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. And then lastly, as we head in, in the worship team, they can come and just be prepared. And Can we just collectively pray for our offerings, past, present, future offerings, those offerings that we've already collected, that we're stewarded well? Can you just pray that? Those that will be collected today, that we're stewarded well, and, and even in the future, that we will steward it well to maximize its usage. That it will be able to meet all ministry needs, known or unknown. Can you pray and just agree with me today that God, we thank you for what we have received, but we also pray that you'll maximize and multiply to meet all the ministry needs. And can you also pray for a spirit of generosity just to fall afresh upon every member of this church, every person who walks through the door, that they will see the work, experience the work that God is doing in us and through us and want to help us extend it to all the world. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the power and authority of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we stand to our feet as we continue to worship today?
said that he loves me he said that he's with me even though i walk through the valley of shadow of death and still i know he has good plans he has good plans for me so i will take heart in deserts and gardens has good plans. He has good plans for me. If I know my Father, I know my Father has good plans. Oh. The Lord is my Savior. Should I doubt my victory? Why should I question the rod and the staff that comforts me? He quiets the waters. He 
Thank you for joining us here at Commitment Online, a place for all nations. If you're ever in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey region, we hope to see you in person. But for now, please tune in next week here at Commitment Online. Thank <laughs> you.